What do you think happens when we die? I know that the ones who love us will miss us. In many ways, Keanu Reeves is a walking contradiction. As one of the world's biggest movie stars, he's also most likely to offer you his subway seat. Contrary to expectations, he doesn't accept every role. In fact, recently, Keanu Reeves revealed why he turned down this role. But first, let's get a grip on the bigger picture. If you look at Keanu's life and career, it's easy to conclude that he wasn't really meant for any of this. Firstly, he was born in Beirut, Lebanon. Sure, it sounds exotic, but it was also a war zone at the time. Not exactly a nurturing cradle for a future megastar, is it? His mom was a costume designer and his dad, well, suffice to say he wasn't in the running for any Father of the Year awards. While he was growing up, Keanu's family bounced between Hawaii, Australia and New York. The kid was a rolling stone before he could even drive. Then, he ended up in Toronto. Initially, Keanu had his heart set on a different kind of stage. He dreamed of hockey glory, like so many other Canadian kids. Yup, he wanted to strap on the pads for the Maple Leafs. Unfortunately, a few too many concussions shattered that dream and left him with a life-changing question, what is a mildly concussed Lebanese-Canadian kid to do? Acting, apparently, it wasn't exactly the most logical next step. Keanu had no grand plan. He simply decided to roll with the punches. In the process, he stumbled into a whole new career. He started with a bit part in a low-budget Canadian sitcom called Hangin' In. In the series, Keanu was basically glorified set dressing, but he had an intensity that shone through, even when he was delivering lines like, Whoa, those fries are radical, dude. Maybe it was the smolder, or maybe it was that Keanu never seemed in on the joke, which inadvertently made things even funnier. Either way, that spark got him noticed. An agent saw potential, whereas others saw a promising future in mall food court management. Now picture this. It's 1989, the era of hair metal, neon leg Warmers, and two California airheads named Bill S. Preston Esquire and Ted Theodore Logan. Keanu Reeves, with his trademark monotone delivery and slightly vacant stare, was perfect as Ted. Bill and Ted's excellent adventure was a glorious mess. Time travel in a phone booth? Rufus, their time-hopping mentor with questionable fashion choices? Historical figures plucked from their eras for a California joyride? It was dumb. Brilliantly. Hysterically dumb. Critics loathed it. But audiences, they went absolutely bananas. Bill and Ted became pop culture icons. Their woe and most excellent entered the everyday slang of an entire generation. It spawned sequels, cartoons, and even a breakfast cereal. Here's the thing, though. The movie shouldn't have worked. On paper, it was a disaster. But Keanu, alongside Alex Winter's Bill, tapped into a goofy sincerity that was downright infectious. They were dumb, but in the most endearing way imaginable. With Bill and Ted, Keanu cemented his status as a comedic force. But here's where his career gets truly interesting. He didn't become the one-trick pony. Instead of chasing the next slacker comedy, he zagged when everyone expected him to zig, and somehow it worked. Then came My Own Private Idaho. This Gus Van Sant movie was a haunting exploration of street hustlers and lost souls, the polar opposite of Bill and Ted. It's about a guy named Mike, and uh, he's a street hustler, street kid, and he goes on a journey to find his mother. Keanu starred alongside River Phoenix in a performance that was raw, vulnerable, and worlds away from surfing, time-traveling airheads. It's a gut punch of a film, and Keanu held his own against the powerhouse that was River. Suddenly, critics were seeing something they'd missed before, that beneath the, whoa, dude, exterior was a legitimate actor. But just when people start thinking the guy may be a brooding indie film darling, what does he do? Keanu pulls a complete 180 and stars in Point Break. Catherine Bigelow directed, Patrick Swayze shone as a charismatic bank robber, and Keanu hit the screen as Johnny Utah. Johnny was a baby-faced FBI agent infiltrating a gang of adrenaline junkie surfers. The film was gloriously 90s, full of cheesy charm, skydiving sequences, and more foot chases than you can shake a surfboard at. Now, logically, this film should have been career suicide. Indie darling to popcorn action hero? It made zero sense. Yet, Keanu pulled it off. He played Johnny Utah with utter earnestness and no hint of irony. 
The action sequences were surprisingly believable, and his chemistry with Patrick T. Swayze was electric. It proved he could handle both depth and ridiculous amounts of explosions. And that, folks, is how Keanu became a true Hollywood enigma. Coming up shortly, Keanu Reeves reveals why he turned down this role. But first, let's gather some speed. By 1994, Keanu was already a recognizable face, but speed was something else. Imagine, Sandra Bullock as a plucky bus driver, Dennis Hopper hamming it up as a delightfully deranged bomber, and Keanu as an LAPD officer called Jack Traven. They were all thrown into a high-stakes game of vehicular cat and mouse. The premise was simple, a bus rigged to explode if it dropped below 50 miles per hour. Tension off the charts. Again, the movie shouldn't have worked this well. It was basically a ticking time bomb with wheels and a side of cheesy 90s action tropes. And yet it became a cultural phenomenon. Why? Keanu, mostly. He'd established himself with the goofy grin of Ted and the brooding intensity seen in my own private Idaho. In speed, he melded those two sides together. He was believable as the quick-thinking action hero with a hint of the bewildered regular guy thrown into the mix. Speed was a critical and commercial smash. It cemented Keanu's place on the A-list, proving he didn't just have the range, he had the star power to carry a massive, action-packed blockbuster. He now had enough star power to pick his roles, so keep watching. In a few moments, Keanu reveals why he turned down a massive role. When The Matrix hit screens in 1999, it wasn't just a movie, it was a seismic shift. Leather trench coats, slow motion action sequences, and those green code waterfalls suddenly infiltrated everything. Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves are back on screen together again, and this time there's not a runaway bus or an explosion in sight. The film became a pop culture juggernaut, and Keanu Reeves, as the enigmatic Neo, was its beating heart. On the surface, The Matrix was a slick sci-fi action flick. Hackers, rebels, and a battle against a simulated reality designed to enslave humanity. It had all the elements of a crowd pleaser. But if you looked a little deeper, you fell down a rabbit hole of philosophy. You ended up questioning not just the nature of reality, but our very existence. The film was made by the Wachowski sisters, and they took those heady concepts and spun them into visually stunning, mind-bending entertainment. And then there was Neo. Keanu, with his quiet intensity and underlying vulnerability, was the perfect embodiment of the everyman thrown into extraordinary circumstances. He was the blank slate onto which audiences projected themselves. Keanu approached the role with his trademark blend of stillness and explosive action. He committed to grueling martial arts training that gave those fight scenes an almost balletic beauty and visceral energy that crackled off the screen. The Wachowskis saw something in Keanu that perhaps he didn't see in himself. That trust paid off. The relationship between the actor and directors was symbiotic. They gave him the role of a lifetime, and he elevated their vision to the legendary status it holds today. The Matrix was Keanu's ultimate springboard. He was already an A-lister, yes, but Neo made him a cultural icon. And unlike some stars who got pigeonholed by such a massive role, he used that platform to keep exploring. Because that's the thing with Keanu, he just keeps defying expectations. And yes, he even did that when he passed up on a huge part and many others actually. Because that's what Keanu is, before anything else, driven by his own mind and free. By the early 2010s, things were humming along for Keanu. He played in smaller indie flicks, dabbled in directing, and had a surprise resurgence with Always Be My Maybe. But the blockbuster action hero thing didn't seem to be in the cards. That is until John Wick came along in 2014. On paper, the film had the recipe for a generic revenge thriller. Retired hitman, murdered puppy, rampaging quest for vengeance against a Russian mob. You've seen variations on this theme a hundred times, but John Wick was different. It had style and dripped with neon-soaked visuals and a darkly comedic undercurrent. And at its core, one pissed off Keanu Reeves. What made Wick such a compelling character wasn't just his quest. It was how he went about it. Reeves, at 50 years old, wasn't content to just phone in a few lazy gunfight sequences. The man threw himself into the physicality of the role with a dedication that bordered on insanity. 
He mastered judo, jiu-jitsu, and tactical firearms training so those action sequences wouldn't just look cool, they'd feel visceral and authentic. The film's directors, Chad Stahelski and David Leitch, former stuntmen themselves, approached the action with a unique vision. Gone were the shaky cams and overly edited cuts so common in modern action cinema. John Wick relied on long takes, wide shots, and fluid choreography to showcase Reeves in action. Every punch, every perfectly aimed headshot felt earned. John Wick wasn't just a return to action movies for Keanu. It wasn't even a comeback. It was a reinvention. He proved that age is just a number, that action stars can have depth, and that sometimes all an audience really needs is one man on a revenge-fueled rampage in a perfectly tailored suit. And who doesn't love a good dog-avenging story, right? Even alongside massive franchises like The Matrix and John Wick, Keanu never stopped exploring other genres. 2005's Constantine was based on the Hellblazer comics. Keanu took on demons as the cynical, chain-smoking exorcist John Constantine. It was a dark, visually striking film, and Keanu brought a world-weary edge to the role that elevated it above a simple, demonic smackdown fest. While not without its flaws, the film gained cult classic status, and Keanu's interpretation of the iconic character still stands tall. With his career on this astonishing trajectory, it starts to make sense why Keanu Reeves reveals why he turned down one big role. That's coming up shortly. But first, Keanu's also not afraid to take a chance on smaller independent films that show his willingness to experiment and support unique voices in cinema. In 2016, he starred in The Neon Demon. It was a visually stunning psychological horror by Nicholas Winding Refn. Keanu played a creepy motel manager, a far cry from his usual heroic roles. It was both unsettling and brilliant. Then, the following year, he was in the Netflix rom-com To The Bone, about a young woman's struggle with anorexia. His was a small, dramatic supporting role that demonstrated his willingness to stand aside and let others shine. The image of Keanu Reeves as the ultimate easygoing collaborator isn't inaccurate. Directors praise his work ethic, co-stars adore him, and even notoriously prickly crew members tend to have only positive things to say. Big, headline-grabbing conflicts simply aren't part of his style. However, being easy to work with doesn't mean being creatively passive. Keanu possesses a strong, artistic sensibility, and while he's unlikely to start on-set feuds, there's evidence of occasional creative differences that highlight his dedication to the craft. A prime example lies in the Matrix sequels, Reloaded, and Revolutions. While the Wachowskis' ambition was undeniable, the sequels were met with a decidedly more mixed reception than the groundbreaking first film. Some critics and fans found the follow-ups too convoluted, overly philosophical, and lacking the visceral action that made the original so captivating. Keanu has never publicly criticized the Wachowskis or the direction they took the franchise. He's nothing if not respectful and professional. However, in interviews, a subtle sense of frustration crept through. He mentioned finding some of the later film's concepts difficult to grasp, and there was a feeling that he didn't fully align with the sequel's creative direction, even though he committed fully to his performance. But if you really want to know about Keanu, the man, and what is important to him, ask his girlfriend. Alexandra Grant is an artist, and they've been together for a while. She recently offered a peek into their relationship. Apparently, it's all very grown up and independent, interdependent and independent in the best ways, is what she calls it. Alexandra emphasizes how their creative paths intertwine and inspire each other. They push each other to build new roads. You get the sense it's less brainstorming action movie stunts over champagne and more discussing existential art installations over herbal tea. They're an unconventional Hollywood power couple. He's the enigmatic action star, she's the introspective artist. 
They both care about characters, though. The story goes they met years ago, did some book projects, and creative sparks flew. Sounds more like a low-key indie film plot than a whirlwind celebrity romance. But hey, who doesn't love a slow-burn love story, especially where Keanu's involved? With this knowledge in hand, it's easy to understand his pattern of prioritizing artistic integrity over commercial success. He walked away from Speed 2, cruise control after all. After the runaway success of the first Speed film, a sequel was inevitable. Despite the reportedly massive paycheck offered, Keanu declined. While complimentary about Sandra Bullock's involvement, he simply didn't find the script compelling. The move was career-defying at the time and demonstrated that he wouldn't prioritize financial gain over the quality of the project itself. And that's a great example of Keanu walking away from a surefire success for all the right reasons. But it's not the example yet. That's coming up. It's important to emphasize that Keanu doesn't approach filmmaking with a desire for total control. Far from it. But the laid-back public persona shouldn't obscure the fact that he's a deeply engaged actor. He analyzes scripts, discusses his character's arc, and has a clear artistic vision. When that vision clashes with the director's or the limitations of the material, it seems a respectful creative tension arises. This, in a way, makes Keanu something of a quiet rebel in the industry. He isn't disruptive or difficult, but by consistently prioritizing the artistic integrity of a project, even if it means turning down massive paydays or potentially alienating powerful collaborators, he defies the typical Hollywood power dynamic. He doesn't force his creative will on others, but he also absolutely refuses to compromise his own. In the realm of what ifs Keanu Reeves missing out on Michael Mann's iconic 1995 crime epic, Heat remains a tantalizing piece of alternative cinema history. The role of Chris Chihurlis, the troubled young bank robber, eventually went to Val Kilmer. Val delivered a fine performance, but it's impossible not to imagine the unique intensity and vulnerability Keanu could have brought to the character. The reason for his absence is surprisingly mundane. Scheduling conflicts with Johnny Mnemonic prevented him from even being considered for the part. It's a bittersweet twist of fate, one project derided as a flop, the other now revered as a modern classic. While Keanu generally remains gracious about roles he's missed, there have been hints of regret about this one. In older interviews, he's mentioned being a huge fan of Heat, specifically singling out the performances of Al Pacino and Robert De Niro and their legendary diner Face Off. There's a wistful tone in these comments, acknowledging that he truly missed out on being part of something special. It's one of the very few instances where Keanu allows a glimpse of the roles that got away, the paths not taken that could have altered the course of his career. In 2022, the news broke that Keanu Reeves had turned down the role of Kraven the Hunter in a planned Spider-Man spin-off movie. This left many fans scratching their heads, especially considering the current state of superhero cinema. Right now, superhero films dominate the box office, they shatter one record after another, and are the pinnacle of mainstream cinematic success. The MCU alone is a multi-billion dollar juggernaut. So why would Keanu, an undisputed A-lister, walk away from such a potentially lucrative opportunity? At first glance, the timing of the offer couldn't have been more perfect. The MCU is ever-expanding and digging deeper into their extensive comic book roster to find new heroes and villains to bring to the screen. The success of morally ambiguous characters like Loki proves that audiences crave more than just straightforward heroes fighting cardboard cutout bad guys. Craven would have been a thrilling addition, a physically intimidating presence, and a compelling psychological foil for our friendly neighborhood wall crawler. So why turn it down? Well, Keanu's always marched to the beat of his own drum. While superhero movies are the cultural behemoth of the moment, that's never been his primary focus. He's ventured into the comic book realm with Constantine Shaw, but his most iconic roles tend to be rooted in original concepts, or at the very least, less mainstream comic properties. There's also the John Wick factor. The franchise has been massively successful for Keanu, and the sequels just keep getting bigger and bolder. Scheduling conflicts were likely a major factor in his decision. Dedicating himself to another action-heavy franchise would have been incredibly demanding. Now for the biggie. Keanu reveals why he turned down this role. It wasn't just fans who were excited by the idea of Keanu Reeves joining the Fast and Furious family. Chris Morgan, the writer and producer for the franchise, actively pursued the star for an undisclosed role. 
In 2019, he confirmed discussions had taken place, saying, I sat down with him and we're talking about it. I wanted him to be in the universe for a very long time. Dwayne The Rock Johnson was also vocal about his desire to see Kinu join the cast. In an interview, he revealed that they'd spoken and the possibility was open. And so, at some point, I, we, me and Kinu, we've talked about it, he said, and I told him, so for some time I think you guys have heard the rumor that it was going to be a bit of a John Wick all disguised. We were talking and it just didn't feel right creatively. The interest was genuine. The pieces seemed to be falling into place. So why did it fizzle out? The unfortunate truth was a classic Hollywood scheduling conflict. At the time, Kinu was juggling multiple demanding projects. He said he was deep into filming John Wick, Chapter 4, and pushing his body to the limit with the franchise's trademark action sequences. Additionally, his return as Neo in The Matrix, Resurrections was on the horizon, an equally iconic character requiring his full focus and commitment. Chris Morgan understood. The hardest thing is always time and competing schedules and then designing the right thing together, he said. My fervent desire is to bring him into this franchise for sure. That open-ended statement suggests that the door was left wide open for a potential future collaboration. It's easy to imagine the type of role they had in mind. The fast and furious world is full of morally ambiguous figures, skilled fighters with a hint of a dark side, and larger-than-life personalities who can both spar with and support the ever-growing ensemble cast. Keanu's intensity and dedication to even the most outlandish action sequences would have been a perfect fit for the franchise's signature style. The Fast and Furious franchise stands apart from the typical action flick crowd. When the first film roared into theaters in 2001, no one could have predicted the cultural force it would become. What began as a story about illegal street racing and undercover cops morphed into a global blockbuster phenomenon. The film raked in billions at the box office and defied every expectation along the way. Numbers speak louder than words sometimes. The franchise has earned over $6.6 .6 billion worldwide. That's not just successful. That's record-breaking. It's on par with the biggest franchises in cinematic history. And it shows no signs of slowing down. Fast and Furious has also expanded beyond the big screen. There are television spin-offs, theme park attractions, and a massive merchandise empire. Keanu becoming a part of that world would have increased both his visibility and the franchise's reach even further. This was a missed opportunity from multiple angles. Keanu missed out on an almost guaranteed blockbuster experience to add to his already impressive action star credentials. And the franchise missed out on the unique intensity and dedication he would have brought to the table. No matter what, Keanu's presence would have added gravitas. He's an actor who makes the impossible feel plausible, grounding even the wildest action sequences with the sincerity of his performance. Within the fast and furious ensemble, his intensity would have been a compelling counterpoint to the quippy humor and over-the-top bravado the other stars bring. He's collaborative, meaning he'd find his groove amongst the established cast and boost their performances. And Keanu is famous for raising the stakes with his undeniable star power. As much as we love analyzing his past choices, the future looks just as exciting for Keanu Reeves. The John Wick saga isn't over yet. Chapter 4 is set for release and the franchise shows no signs of losing steam. As long as Keanu is willing to put in the grueling physical work and audiences are hungry for stylized action, there's always potential for more sequels. He's helped redefine the modern action hero, so it seems only fitting that Wick's story continues as long as Keanu wants to embody him. The Marvel Cinematic Universe still seems like a distinct possibility. Kevin Fager, the head of Marvel Studios, has repeatedly expressed interest in bringing Keanu Reeves into the fold. While Craven the Hunter may be off the table, other characters seem perfect for his style. Ghost Rider, the tormented anti-hero with a flaming skull, seems like a role ripe for Keanu's brand of brooding intensity. He could also portray a grizzled mentor figure like Blade, or a more morally ambiguous character with ties to the supernatural side of the MCU. Despite these massive opportunities, Keanu will likely continue to curate his own path. He's built a career on zigging when everyone expects him to zag. For instance, 
Keanu's not content with just being a movie star. He's co-writing a novel now, with China Mieville no less. You know her as that weird fiction genius who writes about tentacle monsters and sentient cities. The title of their book is The Book of Elsewhere, and it is due for release in July 2024. Sounds ominous. Perfect for Keanu's mysterious aura. Apparently it's got something to do with his BRZRKR comic about some immortal warrior who fights on through the ages. The guy just can't resist stories about unkillable badasses, can he? In true Keanu fashion, he's understated when asked about it. I love the world of BRZRKR so much, he says. If you read it, I hope you love it. No ego, just quietly dropping a potentially wild new novel on us like it's no big deal. Don't be surprised if he chooses to direct another film, produce a small budget indie, or even voice a character in an animated project. The element of surprise is part of his enduring appeal. Could another out-of-the-box hit like Bill and Ted pop up in his future? Absolutely. The man loves the work, and that passion, combined with his unwavering willingness to surprise us, means the most exciting performances might still be ahead of him. Which one is your Keanu Reeves on-screen moment? Tell us in the comments. We'd love to hear. For now, though, we're out of here. Catch you in the next video.